right, and welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. This time around, we're going to be talking about the Dofer A155 analog trigger sequencer. Hopefully, you joined us last time where we did a brief overview of some of the basic features of this module right here. We discussed kind of the layout of this particular module. We talked about what all the switches do uh, in the various positions here, up, down. Uh, we talked about the two rows of dials here, as well as the jacks at the bottom of this, and then talked about the different sections over here labeled trigger outputs, control, and then the two output sections over here for our two rows of CVs. Uh, so I may refer back to those briefly, uh, but if you have uh, sort of any um, not clear notions about it, then I would recommend checking out the previous video. For the most part, this time around, we're gonna jump straight into the demonstration. So what I'm gonna to need to do first is I'm gonna to have to create a clock signal, and I'm gonna use the uh, A147 for that. So let me get a cable patch from my A147, and I'm gonna go into my clock input over here of my A155, there we go. So we should have a little bit of movement going on with my LEDs, and that's telling me which step of the sequence I'm currently on. Now the first thing I'm gonna wanna do is take some notes out from my sequencer. So I'm gonna start with the top row, and that's gonna come out via this section over here, uh, labeled pre-out, post-out, sample and hold control, and glide control. Um, so I'm going to patch into post out right there. And I'm just going to patch into my oscillator just so we get a basic idea. And then we'll kind of expand on this idea a little bit. So there I am down here patched into my oscillator. And I'm going to patch out from the oscillator to get some signal. And then I'm going to go into my mixer just so we hear what that sounds like. There we go. Okay, so that's the basic notes coming out of here. At this point, if I want to, I can go in and adjust my CV levels on each step. So if I want to maybe adjust the note on step one. I can do that. Um, I can also sort of speed up the rate of my clock if I want my sequence to go a little bit faster. And I'm just going to get something really basic right now that I like. Yeah, I like that. All right, now we're switched into the 4 volt range which means these dials are actually affecting a span of about four octaves. I can switch it into the two volt range and you can hear that now it's updated what is actually going out post out. And then if I switch it down to one volt, then we'll only be covering the span of one octave. Here we go. Now, at any time, if I wanted to stop my sequence, I can go up here. Oh, accidentally hit the range switch. Let's go back to one octave. Um, if I want to stop my sequence, I just hit stop, and it'll stop on that step. If I want to sort of start it over again, there we go. It gets me going. Okay. Uh, just wanted to mention that briefly. Uh, now, if I want to add glide to this, let me get this back up in the higher octave. If I want to add glide to this, I can just slide this up a little bit. And you can hear that kind of sliding from note to note. Let me actually slow this down just a little bit. Okay, so right there we have a basic 
a set of notes going out, one for each step, out the post out, which is after the glide, going into our oscillator down here, and then our oscillator going into the mixer right over here. That's as basic as you can get here. Uh, let's unpatch post out because I want you to hear what it sounds like pre out. And you can actually hear that there's actually no glide there. So if I want to get the dry signal um, as far as no glide, I can take out pre out at any time that I want to. Okay, so we got the basic idea behind that. Now why don't we uh, experiment a little bit and hear what the second row of voltages will give us. So we're going to take post out of row number two and we're going to patch into our same oscillator down here. Here we go. Now I can go in here and change the values of each step. I'm just kind of dialing in notes here arbitrarily. Now the range of the blower row, if you remember, is going to be adjusted by the scale dial over here. So if I bring this down, I'm actually spanning a smaller range of values within this second row. And if I bring it all the way to the top, I'm spanning a very broad range of values. The glide value for the most part is the same in this row if I bring it up. I can slew the values going from note to note. So as it moves from note to note, it's slewing. Now of course if I have some values that are for the most part close, you're not going to really hear that pronounced effect as much. But for some of these that are a little bigger of a distance, you will hear that right there. Okay? So that's the basic idea with the notes. Um, now. That's all great, uh, but our signals that are coming out aren't that musically useful yet to us. Uh, that is, we're, they're not adhering to any kind of set scale. You would have to go in and kind of manually um, sort of pot them in or set them in to the specific pitches that you want. Um, and so if you watched a video previously on the Dofer A156 quantizer, which we have in the lower row over here, um, you know that this will actually allow any signal that's going in to be set to uh, a set of values as far as major, minor. Uh, also, you can do chord, which gives you basically a triad, and then also a few other variations of that. So let's hear what our uh, post out values from row one up here are going to sound like going into our quantizer. So we're going to patch post out from the A155 row one patch it right into the A156 dual quantizer. There we go. And then we're going to patch out from our A156 quantizer. And we're going to go straight into our VCO. Now you may be wondering, if you watched the previous video, um, why is he patching into the top one when the top one doesn't actually control that. It's actually just 12 tones to the octave. But uh, one thing I actually went, went and did in here is I set the jumper so that the top section actually responds to the settings down here. So I have two quantizers now basically uh, functioning within the guidelines of whatever is set on these switches. So I'm going to take my CV output, just a little bit of trivia for you, and I'm going to patch into the A110 and we should hear some quantized notes. Okay, right now I'm in major right there. Or sorry, I'm in minor, according to my switch down here. And I'm also in the chord setting. There we go. So if I do scale, 
I'm not a big fan of the minor key, so let's uh, switch over into major. Okay, now I can start working with my signals and then maybe get something a little more musical. Let me turn my glide off. liking that right now. now. Let me actually bring it down to the four octave. Okay, so we got a nice little flavor going on there. So now I have a quantized value going into my A110 VCO, um, but I really have just a straight uh, tone going into my mixer over here. Um, so what I want to do is be able to shape that tone and that's going to be where the section over here of the A155, the trigger outputs, is going to help us. Um, just to kind of give you a little layout of what we're going to do here, we're going to take the trigger output uh, from either one or two, I haven't decided yet, um, we're going to feed it out down into the lower section here into our A140 ADSR. We're going to trigger that envelope. We're going to readjust where our oscillator is going in, put it in the VCA, and then use that envelope to shape our VCA and then back out to the mixer. So I'm going to unpatch this, and then now let's kind of get our setup going. So we got uh, up at the top, we have post out going into quantizer down here, which is what we want. And then we have the CV out from the A156 going into our oscillator. And for the moment, that is what we uh, are ultimately going to want to do. But now we're going to need to take our audio signal and we're going to patch it into our VCA. So I'm going to just happen to pick the pulse or square wave right there. And then I'm going to take the, let's see, let's do triangle wave and then patch it right into that. Um, and then I'm going to actually take my output from the A131 and I'm going to patch it into our mixer. Now we're not gonna hear any sound when I do this because we're not, uh, we don't have any gain going on in the A131. So that's where our A140 is going to come in. But something has to tell it when to go off. Um, and that's where up here at the A155, our trigger outputs are gonna come into play. So I'm gonna take trigger output one. I could really choose either one, but I'm gonna start with trigger output one. And then I'm going to take that straight down to the bottom to A140. And I'm going to patch it into the gate input. We should start to see a little bit of activity right there. And just for simplicity's sake, let me go back up to my A155. I'm going to set all of the switches into the top position. So it will be triggering each step of the sequence out via trigger one. So in essence, our envelope is going to be triggering every step of the way, no pun intended. Um, and so now if I take my output from my envelope at my A140, I can take that straight into my VCA and I should be able to shape my sound a little bit. So let's, let's try that and hear what that sounds like. So I'm gonna take my output of my A140 going right into my VCA. Here we go. Okay, and it's fairly low, so my settings on my A140 more than likely are not giving me very much gain. Because as you can see on the VCA, I, I have a good level over here. I have it to about 3, 3 o'clock on these dials, and the output is set to about 3 as well. So I should be getting a fair amount of signal. Um, so now I can go in and kind of shape my signal, so I can bring my sustain level up a little bit. Now if I want to, I can adjust my attack time, kind of make it lead into that tone a little bit more. Or 
Or if I just want to make a very short sound, I go in the opposite direction. I can just set my envelope to the minimum settings. Almost to a click. Okay. So let me try and get something a little more musically useful. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. Let me bring up uh, the level on my mixer a little bit. Okay, I'm kind of liking that. So as we were saying before, going back up to the A155, right now we are triggering every step. So let's see what happens if we turn off a few steps. Uh, let's see, I'm just going to go one, four, eight. Those are going to be the active ones. So I'm going to turn off everything but that. One, four, eight. So you can hear now that it's only triggering notes on that particular step because now I have the output going into my VCA. So even though the audio is going into my VCA down here, um, it's only being activated at those specific steps. Now, if I wanted to extend it a little bit, I guess I could switch my A140 into the medium setting. And you can almost hear in between the notes coming in. Now, that wasn't my intention right there, but I did want you to just hear what that sounds like if I switch over the, the envelope into the medium setting. I'm gonna go back to the low setting. 